Hello guys! In this video we will take a look at how to configure Logger in Next.js application. Logger is an important part of application development. You can log not only errors but also data from transactions that need to be reviewed. Logger is an important tool for debugging as well. Let's configure our application with a Winston Logger. Okay, let's do yarn add Winston Winston daily rotate file. After the dependencies are installed, we can create a new folder called services. In this folder, we can create a file called logger.js. In the logger.js file, let's import create logger format and transports from Winston. Also, let's import Winston daily rotate file. Now, create function get logger. And we'll pass file name and assign it to application. The first thing that we will define is this function will be file log transport. This transport will send our logs to the file and we'll put it in the logs folder. The next one we defined console transport. This transport is basically sending our logs to console. Now we can define our logger itself. See the most important parts here is how we format our timestamp and also how we format our log. Now we can put conditional if our process in the environment is development we add to the logger our file log transfer but if it is production the logger will be logging only to a console. And the last part we will return our logger. So finally, we can do export default or get logger function. And I actually like to call this function so I get logger itself, but you can call this function in your applications in case you want to pass any parameters into your logger function. Now let's hit save. Okay, so in development this logger will be logging to both file and console and in production to console only. In production environments such as Kubernetes logs are usually scooped and sent to a logging service like Sumo Logger uh, or in a case of Vercel, console logs can be shown to the application owner when he or she requests it. If you have a logging service where you can send your logs over HTTP, it is also a good idea to format your logs as a JSON and not as printf right here. And then you can use uh, HTTP transport. You can create HTTP transport over Winston. Now let's test our logger. Before doing that, just be sure you have a REST client installed in your VS Code. We will go to our pages and API folder and we'll create a file testapi.http. In this file, we can put get http there's dash local host 3000 and we'll put api slash hello. 
Now let's start our application, yarn dev. And here we'll do command shift P or control shift P on Windows. And we use rest client send request. We hit enter and you can see we got response back name John, John Doe from our file hello.js right over here. So this file receives the HTTP request and responds with the name John Doe. Let's log the headers of the request. We can do logger and you can see that we got logger import automatically here. We'll put that info and we can go request headers and then we will do json that stringify break headers. Let's save it. Repeat our call. Okay, we got the response back. But now you can see that we have a logs file. And you can also see that our log appeared in a console. So if you go to that file, we can see that we have log with the development environment and we have request headers and it tell us the headers that Visual Studio Code HTTP client sent. Now let's go back to hello.js file and we can try to log an error. So let's do try and then put catch And inside, we're going to be throwing an error. So throw new error. We'll put oops. There was an error processing your request. Now in the catch, we will be catching this error. When we get this error, we'll say logger error. And we can just log the error stack so we can go later and see if there is an error and it's hard to find it in the console log. We can just refer to our file and see what the stack shows us. So we'll do error stack. And since we have an error, we can do return res status, let's say 400. And we'll put also JSON response. Response will be code. We call it oops. Message will be there was an error. All right, let's save the file. Our linter will complain about unreachable code, but uh, we don't care. Okay, let's repeat our request again. And now we got oops and a message that there was an error. So let's go ahead and take a look at our log file. And the log actually tells us what happened here. And it tells us that our error happened in a hello.js file. And we can trace it down if there, is, if there is more information about it. As you can see, our logger is working. Let's remove our try catch from hello.js file and save it. And the last thing, we need to add logs folder to git ignore file. So we don't want to version control it because every person, every developer, they'll have this separate logs folder on their machine. We can put it like so, slash logs. Okay, let's save the git ignore file. Cancel out of our server and hit git add, git commit, Hashem, add Winston logger. All right, and now our test is going to run and linting as well. And after everything is done, you can see that our logs folder is not committed to our repo. It's not going to be committed. 
This is how you add Winston Logger to your Next.js project. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.